APC Technologies. We're here at World Hydrogen North America Conference doing interviews with thought leaders and some pretty smart people about the hydrogen economy and the hope it has. Uh, our sponsors are, of course, APC Technologies, World Hydrogen Leaders, and, uh, of course, H2Scan, who's advanced sensing technology for the hydrogen economy. Things are changing rapidly and you will hear some amazing things from amazing people who are decarbonizing the world and who are moving hydrogen forward. So join us, enjoy these interviews. My next guest is Gid Herman. I do know Gid. Some of the people I've, I've talked to here, Gid, I've never met before, but I do know you. You are with H2Scan on the process safety side, and you are business development leader for process and safety of hydrogen. It's a brand new world, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it isn't. You've been there a long time, I know. But let me ask you something. Why did you even come into the hydrogen economy? Yeah, well... There's enormous potential in front of it, right? So it's, it's something that is it's still new. It's still very much a, a wild, wild west in a lot of ways, but it's developing. And, you know, the opportunity in front of a company like H2Scan is just absolutely enormous at the moment. Yeah. What is the pedigree of H2Scan? So it, it's about a 20-year-old company today. Wait, wait, wait. Hydrogen economy is new. It How is. How can you it be is. talking about a 20-year-old company? Yeah, exactly. So we've been monitoring, measuring, detecting hydrogen for 20-plus years at this point. Wow. The technology rolled out of Sandia National Labs a long time ago, was licensed H2 Scan. Today we own it exclusively. And we've been detecting hydrogen in process and safety applications for a long time. Right. So that includes oil refineries, chemical plants, transformer monitoring, uh, anywhere the hydrogen is used, which it turns out is pretty much everywhere. Yeah, right. Almost every industry is using hydrogen somewhere, somehow. So, and I wrote an article and it got published in a number of places and the article was hydrogen, hyper hope. A lot of people really panned the article, but my whole point was to get the discussion about, hey, is, is this really going to change society? We're talking about a major change of decarbonization. Right. Uh, talk a little bit about the hyper hope part of hydrogen. Sure. So there's there's enormous interest in it today. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. The inquiries we get from around the world, the opportunity here. It's absolutely something that is being driven by this effort to decarbonize the energy world. Okay. So a great push to do this. Natural gas is used everywhere in the world. Uh, but there's a big effort now to introduce hydrogen into the natural gas stream. Right. So hydrogen can be produced in many ways, and then once it's introduced in the natural gas stream, now you have to monitor it and detect it safely. We see this as having enormous potential in the future because of, you know, for every, every time you're adding hydrogen into the natural gas stream, that's that much less natural gas that gets burned at the end, that much less carbon pollution. So we absolutely see a huge opportunity for hydrogen in the natural gas pipeline, the hydrogen economy. One of the things that uh, you, you, this whole econ hydrogen economy is uh, uh, going to need is collaborative efforts. There's not going to be one answer for one thing. There are a lot of different, you know, hydrogen fuel cell EV versus EV. I mean, there's just a lot of collaborative efforts needed. Talk a little bit about your experience with collaboration, because I know you do that a lot with customers, helping that's, them solve their problems. Yeah. That's a lot of what we do, because there's so many different parts in the whole value chain here that we can be involved in. So that includes the hydrogen production side of it. There's a lot of different ways to produce hydrogen, and there's a lot of need to be able to, you know, obviously do it safely yeah. and measure it reliably and consistently. So we're involved on the production side of it. Then we're involved with the transportation side of it through the, what's called power to gas. So that's where you're introducing the hydrogen into the natural gas stream. Right. You have to monitor and detect that safely along the entire chain there. Then at the very end, now you have to use the hydrogen in the natural gas, and that's where we can be involved as well. So whether that takes the form of a fuel cell that's a mobile fuel cell, stationary fuel cell for power, anywhere along the natural gas pipeline, you know, this, this, the, the, the hype is real, you know, the opportunities are there. There's an enormous interest and it's global. Yeah. It's not just a North America thing. It is global. It is, uh, you know, Australia, Japan, Korea, all across Northern Europe, the U.S., enormous amounts of interest in it today. I think it's, it's really, uh, you know, pardon the pun, it's really exploding. 
and uh, you know, will we'll be a big <laughs> we should, thing. <laughs> we shouldn't be saying that, but I get the well, spot. Well, we can help prevent it. that, right? Yes, that's good. <laughs> that, that's why we need H2 scan, because we don't want it exploding. Exactly. The um, electrolyzer fuel cell market, talk a little bit about that and, and where safety, where, because right now, part of the problem is scale, right? Getting, uh, getting electrolyzers to scale, getting fuel cells to scale, whether right. they're stationary, right. whether they're EV. Talk a little bit about your role in that. Yes, yeah, so there's, there are countless projects being announced almost on a daily basis around the world for new electrolyzers developing you know, incredible amounts of capacity. There's, that's everything from small Dutch startups to enormous Fortune 500 companies that are looking into how to get into this space. Right. And, and uh, you know, it's still, there's enormous opportunity. There's a lot of different technologies. So there's a lot of companies testing new technologies. Uh, they have different ways of producing the hydrogen, uh, using the hydrogen. But at the end of the day, you still have to do it in a safe way. Right. And that's something where we are getting, again, enormous amounts of interest in this because you, what you don't want to have happen is hydrogen leaking for whatever reason, getting into you know, the oxygen side of an electrolyzer. That's just one example of where we're right. working with a lot of these companies. And so because we can monitor it in a, in a real time and continuous way, which there's no other real technology that can do that, right. you know, companies are turning to us for the solution to help make this a reality, right? So a lot of these projects are going, they've, they've been announced, they're in the project phase, they're in the planning phase, they're talking to us, they're trying to figure out what the right solutions will be. Going back to your question about collaboration, and then these will start to be rolled out in enormous scales over the next several years. It's not hype, it's hope. I, you, you've just given me hope that we are in the right place at the right time. Um, there, there are two, appears to be two different motivations. The motivation in a lot of Europe is because of the war in the Ukraine and the, the need to uh, secure their fuel source. I mean, they have energy insecurity right, right now. Right. In the U.S., North America, uh, Latin America, and maybe parts of Asia and uh, the Middle East, it's, it's more of a, hey, let's do something to decarbonize, but we don't have the same level of risk, feeling the risk right now as the Europeans do. Is that a face, fair statement? Uh, it is, absolutely, okay. yeah. So it, we're not pursuing it in a lot of parts of the world because of that energy and security. We're pursuing it in, in this need to decarbonize for right. the future, right? So what that looks like, I mean, the time horizons are pretty large here. So everything today, it's very important to establish the right solutions today in order to grow this and scale it up over the next 5, 10 to 20 years. Do you think that some of the things we're doing in Europe based on need they are things that would be replicated around the world, or, or where is the best innovation well, it, coming from? Yeah, so well, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yeah, and so yeah. that could very much be driving it. Um, we see a lot of this across, uh, a lot of the interest has come and started out of Northern Europe. And for right. sure, they've been impacted uh, heavily with their energy security. But honestly, it started a couple of years before this even. So they were driving it, uh, a lot of this energy around green energy, right, decarbonization, right. That, that started it. Energy insecurity is for sure driving it and accelerating it. Um, but here, like in the US, for example, it's more around uh, uh, cleaning up the environment and decarbonization okay. efforts. Excellent. Well, it has been a delight. You've been a great guest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. Alan. Good talking to you. Good to talk to you.